problems I've seen, and uh, uh, I'll be, I, I don't want this to sound more pessimistic than it is, but at the same time, it's worth looking hard because a lot of our future collectively, I think, depends on what actually happens abroad in higher education. What are some of the issues that I see? One, although a lot of societies, including European countries, France, Germany, Italy, not to mention other countries in other parts of the world, have expanded access to higher education, they have not concomitantly expanded anything like the facilities, the size of the faculty, the library systems, the scientific laboratories, and so on. So you've had this enormous increase in students, many of whom come, can't really find the right sort of courses or the right teachers, hang around for a lot of time, and don't get degrees, or maybe get degrees after quite a few years. There are two mega universities now that you probably know about, one in Mexico City and one in Sao Paulo. Each of them has more than 200,000 students, and they don't have anything like the number of faculty or facilities to help to start educating those students. Well, that's one extreme. But those of you who know the system in France or in Germany or Italy know that they, are, they have far more access than they do in capacity. Unlike us, and I, this is not to be an invidious comparison, but one thing that we did right after the Second World War was to actually expand capacity as we expanded access. We grew the size of our institutions. New institutions were created, and so on. And so very, very few students were shut out. We kept the idea that if you went to college, you were expected to graduate. And you were expected to graduate in four years, or at most five, or two years if it was a community college or whatever. And that was, that was the way it went. And we felt obliged to give people the number of teachers and the libraries and everything else. It wasn't perfect, but it was a real systemic change of the whole thing. That simply hasn't happened abroad. And that's a big, big problem. Um, another uh, faculty shortage. Uh, it's a rare college outside of the highly industrialized, uh, most modernized uh, country. It's a rare country where in the colleges and universities, many of the faculty have PhDs. Just not the case. Now, a PhD doesn't mean everything and anything, but it does have at least one thing about it. It means that you've been forced to study your subject in great depth and to write something sustained about some piece of that subject and try to add some knowledge to it. It's a, it's a kind of training, if nothing else. And an awful lot of people who are teaching subjects uh, in colleges and universities, and I won't venture on a percentage across, but a large number of people don't have PhDs. Just a fact, it's too bad. Uh, it, it doesn't so yet. Large signs of getting a whole lot better. Uh, finally, the resources that governments are now willing to commit to higher education and research uh, are very, very limited. And that's because, on the whole, and I'm talking now in most countries abroad, and you know, there are some exceptions, on the whole, there are just too many other priorities. Poverty, in some cases, you know, just getting food to people. Disease, health, environmental issues, in some cases, military and personal security, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, so that higher education and research, no matter how much it's valued, if you look at the fraction of dollars, GMP, going to it, it's nowhere near what's going in the other areas. So, and that may be exactly the right decision. I mean, uh, if I were running a government, I suppose, you know, if I had people who were starving and ill, I'd go to try to solve those problems first. Uh, but the one concomitant consequence of that is that higher education, research, facilities, and all the rest of it just doesn't come as high as one might wish it to come. And here's the second point. It's never going to come that high again, at least in the foreseeable future. It just isn't going to come. Because there's not enough wealth in those societies to make it happen. In some cases, there's not enough desire to want to make it happen. In, third case, in some cases, people do not want it to happen. They don't want an educated populace because education is actually quite dangerous. Having people who have free minds and who go around saying and criticizing people and saying why are you doing this and why do you believe that and all the rest of it, it's very unsettling. 
to people who are trying to run countries in a certain way. So there are lots of reasons why uh, this phenomenon exists, whether it's because you don't have enough wealth, or whether it's because you don't really care enough about it, or whether it's because you really think it's quite dangerous. Uh, nonetheless, there's not enough investment in higher education going on abroad. Um, so piece of that is one reason, one very important piece, is that the model is not a good model. The model is a state-run model. Virtually out of the United States, I think we all know, except for a few places, Hither and Yon, and a few institutions, Hither and Yon, basically we're looking at state finance higher education across the board, ab abroad. Even in England, where there's some so-called private institutions, nonetheless, they get a huge amount of their money from the state. And certainly when you move outside of England, uh, that's the pattern, that's the norm. Why is it a good model? Well, one, as I just told you, the states don't have enough money and they're not going to put enough money in. So the higher education systems are in great trouble only for that. What's the right model? Well, there's probably no one right model, but without some help from the private sector, without some help from philanthropy, without some help from various other sorts of things, these institutions aren't going to be able to grow to the level of quality they should grow to.